It's 10 days to the election. And in 10 days, we'll elect a new president of the United States. But not only that, but down ballots here in the Commonwealth of Virginia and across the country will have a new U.S. senator. All U.S. congressmen are up for re-election. Mayors of cities. It's all on the ballot. Who will you vote for? Are you registered? And what will happen the day after the election? It's Stay the One. I'm your host, Dr. Eric Cavill. We'll be right back in just a moment. Welcome back. It's Stay the Water. I'm your host, Dr. Eric Cavill. I want to thank you so much for joining us on this beautiful Sunday that we're broadcasting here in Hampton Roads, as we always do, from none other than the campus of the Norfolk State University, home of the Spartan Nation, where we just celebrated our homecoming. That's right. Norfolk State is 89 years old. We've celebrated homecoming uh, here on, yet on this past weekend, where we played the Howard Bison. And also, not just that, but we had many festivities across the board from pageants to also alumni events and and the like. And and it was just a great, great time that we had here at Norfolk State. Beautiful parade on Saturday, tons of elected officials and special guests. I'm telling you, we know how to do it here at Norfolk State. And look, this is my third homecoming because I have two sons in school at other universities and uh, one at Virginia State, big state, one and one at Howard. So I had split loyalties this this past weekend. So I had uh, I, I was rooting for the football game, but for the band, because my son is the drum major for Howard University. So I said, well, you know, I got to support my son. But again, they're all winners. All our kids are winners. If you're in college, you're getting your degree. If you're here supporting HBCUs, if you are doing what you're supposed to be doing, and getting the support that you, and we're supporting you as parents and as your village and community, you're all winners. So again, our homecomings are like no other on HBCU campuses. It is definitely a coming home to friends, coming home to everything that's good about our university, that's good about our friendships, good about our community. For one weekend, for one week, we can definitely all relate and be on the same page. So again, thank you all the alumni that support this great institution, our board of visitors, our administration, our phenomenal president, Dr. J, who I had the pleasure to work for, and just everybody involved. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your support uh, because we couldn't do what we do here as we broadcast from none other than WNSB Hot 91 Soul of VA. You know, this radio station, over 40 years old, on this campus has been giving opportunity and opportunity after opportunity for many uh, individuals and they found their career and some at the highest level in entertainment today because they got their start here. So I can go on and on about the great things about our institutions, but that's not the show today. The show today is called The Vote. It's Stay the Water and we are talking about The Vote. Ten days left until we elect a new president of the United States. That's amazing. And it's very possible we will elect the first woman and first black woman president of the United States, the first HBCU graduate of the United States, the first Divine Nine member president of the United States. Unprecedented. You know, but again, as we continue to progress, as we continue to move forward, as we continue to do the things that we know to do to make sure that everything that we do in this country is equitable, equal, fair. And we're not saying that more people, some groups should have more, some groups should have less, and you take away what individuals have. But when you come to the game, just make sure you're giving the equal amount, the equal amount, the equitable amount of opportunity and allow your skills and your desire and your passion to do the rest. And as long as we continue to do that, we'll continue to break ceilings, crash them, break down walls, Break them down to the point where you can't rebuild them again. And that's the beauty of what we do. So, again, 10 days, 10 days to go vote. And guess what? Here in the Commonwealth of Virginia, because of the Democrats that were in office at the time, and it's just just the facts, everybody, just the facts. It's a nonpartisan show, but just the facts. When the Democrats were in office under former Democratic Governor Northern, they passed a Voting Rights Act, the second in the country where it protected, protected the voting rights of individuals on a state level. With that being the case, they also passed early voting and no excuse absentee voting. Man, I tried to vote absentee one time. Couldn't even, couldn't even fit my excuse anywhere, right? So, I, you know, but again, no excuse 
absentee voting, early voting, 45 days until the election. And guess what? You could have voted yesterday on Saturday. Polls start to open according to according to the elections, Department of Elections uh, here, Virginia Department of Elections, on the 26th of October, yesterday, offices, re- voter registration offices open early for voting. The last day for in-person early voting is next Saturday, November 2nd at 5 p.m. That's next Saturday, November 2nd at 5 p.m., the last day of early for voting in person. Now, after that, if you have a mail-in ballot, which the last day to have requested uh, to apply for a mail-in ballot is October 25th, right? So that day passed. That was Friday of last week. First day for Saturday voting was yesterday uh, on the 26th. And the last day for in-person voting is November 2nd, next Saturday. Then after that, we have... You now, you have Sunday, Monday, and then you go vote on Tuesday. The polls open on Tuesday. Go cast your vote. Listen, we're going to talk about, in this show, we're going to talk about how close the vote is. We're going to talk about which votes count, which votes matter. Every vote, let me tell you this, in this election, every vote is going to matter. Every vote is going to matter in this election. That's why you have to cast your vote. That's why you have to ensure that what you're doing is you're not taking it lightly. You're understanding the the magnitude of when you go into that booth and cast your vote from whomever you want to cast your vote for. But go out and exercise your right to vote. There's no way, absolutely no way, that African Americans or anyone, or even even non African Americans, should sit home. But especially African Americans, because we were denied the right to vote. There's no reason a woman should sit at home and not vote because you were denied the right to vote. It's called men and women's suffrage. The 15th and the 19th Amendment. These amendments gave men, 15th, black men, 19th, all women, the right to vote. It's in the Constitution. We had to amend the Constitution to do it. And that's because we were denied the right to vote. As a matter of fact, our relatives, our forefathers, in early on, in the beginnings of the country, and even more so in the classic civil rights era, in the 50s, if you tried to go vote, you could be killed. If you tried to go vote, your resources, your job could be taken away from it. If you tried to go vote, not a lot of good things could happen to you because it was against the law. Mega Evers lost his life because he was rallying people to vote. Think about that. Going home, opening his door to go in to, after a long day, and he was met with a bullet to the back of his head. But guess what? Many others, many others suffered as well. And because of that sacrifice, we go vote. John Lewis walked across that bridge. And he was beaten, but he kept going because of the right to vote. Many, many. And those are just two that I'm naming, but there are many others. I, my good friend, Delegate Cliff Hayes Jr., who is a distinguished alum of this institution, loves it to death. He's one of our great legislators in, in the state legislation, in the General Assembly. And he talks about how he keeps, you know, a copy of the poll tax that was paid by his relative as to the reason why he does what he does. Now think about that. We're talking about poll taxes paid not too long ago. We're not talking about, you know, a thousand years ago, a hundred years ago. We're talking about less than, we're talking about 50, 60 years ago. Poll taxes had to be paid. So therefore, I'm urging you, everyone that's listening to my voice, everyone that listens to this show, Make sure you go out and exercise your right to vote. Whoever you vote for, just make sure you go out and vote. Take someone with you. You know, make sure you do it. Lastly, on voting, about (laughs) going out to vote, we just had, my family, we just had a phenomenal time in our family because I would always take my sons, my two boys, they're my shadows, just like my brother and I were our father's shadow. We would, I I would take them with us and, 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 and my wife, we would take the boys with us to go vote. And they were being the booth. And I have a picture, say, where uh, we voted. Uh, I happened to go into the same school that they were there, elementary school, when Obama was running and for re-election. And I brought them with me, and we went into the booth. They were with me and voted. And then they, they got a sticker. Of course, they didn't vote. They were just with me. But they were holding, I had them hold the ballot on each side. And I took that picture. And I had them hold that ballot to show that this is what your responsibility is. This is why America exists. And I still have that picture to this day. And this year, both our sons were eligible to vote in their first presidential election 
in their lives. And it was a beautiful moment. So I have those pictures as well. <laughs> so, so again, for us, like I said, just a beautiful moment, phenomenal time to see the growth of what you instilling in your children, the growth of what we instill in our students here, the growth of what is passed down and how individuals, those individuals continue to move forward and then make this country great. So make sure you go out and vote. Make sure you take someone, one with you. Make sure you also read the sample ballot before you go vote. Because if you don't read the sample ballot before you go vote, you will be confused in the voting booth. There's a very high possibility. And you'll cast your vote maybe for the person that you want to or maybe for the person you don't want to. It's all, you know, anything's possible unless you do the research and you make up your mind, then it's definite. So make sure you do that and make sure you continue to exercise your uh, right to vote. Now, let's take a look at what's going to happen, you know, what's happening currently in this presidential election. We know that since President Joe Biden stepped down from election, um, uh, the campaign, he was replaced by his vice president, Vice President Harris, who now is running neck and neck, a tight race with the former president, Donald Trump. In 10 days, one of those will be our next president of the United States. With that being the case, we saw that after the uh, first assassination attempt where the former president was actually shot, again, just by the grace of God, he, he turned away and the bullet missed him. The way it could have actually taken his life, but it did not. It hit his ear. And with that, they saw, we saw a major surge in support for the president the former president, and with from his base and, and others that were on the fence. Then we saw the debate. And with the debate, we saw a major surge for the former president and a major, but more so, a major decline for the current president. And with that, calls were, were being pushed to, for him to step down and step over, move over, and allow the next generation of leaders to take, take their, their opportunity. He did so graciously. It's, it takes a lot. It takes a lot to do that, and he did so gracious, especially after what happened in the 2016 election where he thought he should have been a nominee and uh, Hillary Clinton should not have been. It, it was his, thought Maybe it was his time after being vice president for eight years on the former President Obama. But he graciously stepped down, and his legacy is intact. And we did a show on uh, President Biden and African Americans. We're going to do it again at the end of his term. And just to show how important this president was and is to the African American community as it relates to the forward progress that we have in our country. Now, moving forward, we now saw after Harris stepped up to be the nominee, a huge, huge flip, a huge surge in support. As a matter of fact, the bump that he would have received, he didn't get the full bump, the former president of all the things that took place as it relates to the debate and attempt assassination. Because it happened almost the next, well, actually, the, the next day almost, when it ended up happening when Harris announced her run. And it dissipated the, his lead that he had, and he was behind by as much as five to seven percentage points in some states. Well, come 10 days before the election, it has now resettled. It was a solid 4% lead, percentage point nationally that the, that the current vice president had over the former president, but now it's virtually a dead tie. Some would say 48-48, some would say 49-48, but whatever the case may be, there is a large group of voters that are sitting on the fence that are undecided that will potentially decide this election and more specifically decide it in the very important battleground states. Deciding this election in battleground states will is, is paramount to what will take place and what who will be president. Let's let's take a closer look at it. Now, according to USA Today, uh, article published uh, just last week, entitled "Battleground State Polls: The Latest Trump versus Harris Surveys a Tight Race." It says, with less than two weeks to go until election day on November fifth, a new batch of polls show the presidential race remains tight in many other states likely to matter most. Now, every state matters, but these states will decide the elections, about seven of them. The major party nominees, according to USA Today, Democrat Kamala Harris and Republican Donald Trump, they're making their final arguments to voters in a series of events across the country. 
Now, they're focusing on these states. They're called key swing states. They're focusing on uh, what we call uh, currently these states are Arizona. And now these states actually flip parties from 2016 to 2020. Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Georgia. All right. Those five states, those five states are states that flipped parties. Now, the candidates are also keeping an eye on Nevada and North Carolina, which are considered better ground states for this year as well. So those seven states, those are the ones that are going to decide this election. Arizona, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Georgia, and then, of course, also Arizona and Nevada. The tight margins in these in this particular these particular states are tight because of the back and forth in 2016 and 2020. According to USA Today, it says because the U.S. presidential race is determined by the Electoral College, not the popular vote, razor thin margins in, in these states could decide, and I believe they will decide, the outcome in this year's election. As a matter of fact, they believe that as November 5th draws closer, the look at the latest polls show this race getting tighter and tighter. Now, here's the most important, I believe, the most important state to decide this election, and that's Pennsylvania. So what's happening in Pennsylvania, the home state of the sitting president? What is happening in Pennsylvania, the state where the governor was a potential vice presidential candidate for the Harris ticket? Pennsylvania, the state in which Philadelphia overperformed during COVID in order to elect President Biden. The state of Pennsylvania, it is the state, the Commonwealth, where democracy, the Constitution, was born. Let's see how it may be decided based on numbers today. In Pennsylvania, Trump is leading Harris by one percentage point in a new poll by Franklin and Marshall College. The poll, they, they uh, surveyed 784 registered Pennsylvania voters showed Trump leading 50% to Harris 49%, which is within the polls, plus or minus 4.3 percentage point sample error. Now, Trump is also leading Harris by one percentage point in the new Emerson College poll. This poll surveyed 860 likely voters in Pennsylvania, found Trump leading 49 to Harris 48. And the poll showed Trump in the lead with a margin of error of point or minus 3.1. These two polls, I, I actually utilize Emerson College poll and very credible. So, again, you're finding you're finding likely voters and registered voters. So that's key. When you read polls, you have to ask yourself, what's what's in the details? We all know the same. The devil's where in the details with the devil being in the details. I wanted to point out and wanted to make sure you heard me about these particular in individuals who were surveyed. 784 registered Pennsylvania voters and also another poll, 860 likely voters. OK, likely voters doesn't mean that they're registered, you know, if you could still reg register to vote in that particular Commonwealth. But both these sh sh polls showed one percent, one percent. Now, I believe that these polls or this, these polls are fairly correct because Individuals, when you have an unpopular candidate or a candidate who is seen to be a little brash, like the former president, Trump, a lot of people won't say publicly that they'll vote for him, but they'll go in the booth and vote or they'll go or on a survey and say, yes, I will, because they know it's private. So that number looks solid. And what it also represents, 50 percent, if you take a look at the averages in the states that were very close and across the country, Trump has about 48 percent. Of the, of the voting population support. What does that tell you? That tells you that if he's bumped up two other percentage points in, in a battleground state, that shows that you have some leaning voters that are leaning toward him. It also can show that maybe the polls were taken in communities that were not urban, communities that, didn't, uh, that were more suburban, or communities where you know individuals registered to vote pretty much on a regular basis. So, again, when the poll was taken, who did you survey? And that pretty much decides, you know, the poll itself. Now, let's take a look at Wisconsin. Trump is leading Harris by one point in a separate poll by Emerson, also released on last week, Thursday. All right. That was three days ago. 
The poll of 800 likely voters in Wisconsin showed Trump leading 49-48, which is, again, within the margin of error of point or minus 3.4%. North Carolina, Trump is leading Harris by two percentage points. In a third poll by Emerson College released Thursday, the poll of 950 likely voters in North Carolina found Trump 50 to Harris's 48%. In another poll, same story, Trump is leading Harris by two percentage points. In a poll by Marist College, which was released on Thursday, and this survey of 1,226 likely voters in North Carolina showed Trump leading 50 to 48 percent. The poll also showed Trump with a lead within the margin of error of point or minus 3.6 percent. Also, in Arizona, Trump is leading Harris by one percentage point, 50 to 49 percent. Trump in Georgia and Harris are neck and neck in a third poll by Marist College released Thursday. The poll of 1,193 likely voters in Georgia found that the two candidates are tied 49 to 49 percent. And these results with the poll's margin of error of 3.9 plus or minus. So right now, Georgia, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, go up to Wisconsin, and then also go down to Arizona it shows Trump leading Harris by a, for the most part, one percentage point. One percentage point. Let's go back to what I said earlier in the show. One vote. One vote. Don't think that your vote doesn't count. One percentage point. (laughs) Every single vote counts. Now, there are states that weren't mentioned, and that's Michigan, and that's also Nevada. These states tend to be uh, securely in the hands of the Democrats, uh, but again, with the lead that Harris has on, in those states. However, again, it all depends on the day of voting. One percentage point, 49 to 48, 50 to 49, right? You saw that two, percent, two percentage points in North Carolina, which is fairly, you know, to be expected because of North Carolina and how it votes. However, we see now that states that are c- coming closer um, you know, we have the Mid-South area. We're here in the Commonwealth of Virginia, the middle of the Mid-South. And states closer to us are becoming more Democratic-leaning and that were traditionally red or Republican-leaning. So what is that telling us about the country and where the country wants to go? What does that tell us about the candidates and the candidates and what they want, should do for voters? What is this telling us? So let's take a look at what's happening here in the Commonwealth of Virginia in Virginia Beach. Well, actually, the 2nd Congressional District. In the 2nd Congressional District, there is a competitive Virginia House race in which current U.S. Congresswoman Jen Kiggins is being challenged by a Democratic challenger, Missy Cottle. And this smozzle, this particular race within itself, is just one percentage point. (laughs) That separates them. Now, it was a 4 to 5% lead by one poll before the debate that took place at Virginia Wesleyan University here in uh, Hampton Roads. However, since that time, the Republican incumbent, according to Fox News, lead over Democratic challenger Missy Cotton Smozzle in Virginia's 2nd Congressional District has narrowed to just one point, one percentage point. It also goes on to report that the district, which includes Virginia Beach, and is the home to a large military population, has flipped between red and blue twice in the past six years, making it a critical battleground for control uh, of the House. In addition to that, Vice President Harris is currently two points ahead of former President Donald Trump among likely voters in the district, with the lean shifting more to the right after redistricting following the 2020 census. If you dig down a little deeper in the article, it shows where Congresswoman Kiggins currently received 46% support among registered likely voters. And again, not likely voters, but registered likely voters. Whereas uh, Smozzle garnered 45%, according to a new poll by the Watson Center for Civic Leadership at Christopher Newport University, one of our neighboring institutions here, along with Virginia Wesleyan here in Hampton Rose. Great, two great institutions as well great leadership there and just a great experience. The Republicans' lead has also tightened since the same poll mid-September, again, when Kiggins was five points ahead of Smozzle. And Fox News goes on to say that the margin of error for both polls is 3.9%. However, 
The district centered around Virginia Beach that includes Chesapeake, Suffolk, Isle of Wight, and Virginia's eastern shore is considered one of the most competitive in the state. It is the most competitive. Both Republicans and Democrats have cited it as among those critical to securing control of the House for the next two years. Now, for those of you who are listening, not here in Hampton Roads and those that are that are, you know, we are home to a large military population. We have the largest naval base here in Norfolk in the world. Let's 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 go ahead and say that again in the world. You know, just had an African-American commander, female. I mean, just phenomenal, phenomenal. You know what we're doing here for our military and former military, of course, veteran of the U.S. Army, National Guard, you know, and to all of our military families and those currently serving. You know, what we do in Hampton Roads uh, for our military is phenomenal. And, of course, we as veterans, we want to send people back to Congress that are going to work for not just the people, but the military that uh, helps to secure, in large part, the freedoms that we enjoy for this country, along with diplomacy, along with education, along with being able to talk and greet our neighboring countries. Um, The military is very important. To that end... I've been fortunate enough to be the analyst for the debate, the only debate that was held by the, sponsored by the Hampton Roads Chamber here and held again at Virginia Wesleyan between these two candidates. And I was also fortunate enough to uh, meet with uh, both candidates and also uh, to also meet with one of the Democratic leaders, Hakeem Jeffries, uh, out of uh, Washington, D.C., who is also a fellow Kappa brother of the Moo Kappa chapter of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated uh, here at Virginia Wesleyan uh, during an event just this past week. And with that, uh, he's also the minority leader. And if the Democrats take control, he would be the first African-American Speaker of the House. So that, again, just phenomenal, phenomenal opportunities that we have with this election coming up. But what would happen? Now, wouldn't it be amazing if this particular seat for Congress went Republican and then but the presidency with Democrat or vice versa or it all went one way but that's where one vote matters and when we talk about one vote mattering that that matters let, let me give you one more statistic here one more thing that's happening here in our Commonwealth that deals with voting just this past week a federal judge in Virginia they blocked uh, Virginia voter purge was blocked by a U.S. judge ahead of the election. A federal judge in Virginia halted what she concluded was an awful systematic purge of names from the state's voter rolls ahead of the November 5th presidential election in a win for the Biden administration. The ruling Friday came after the U.S. Justice Department sued Virginia and Alabama in the final weeks of the campaign and made the argument that they violated a 90-day quiet period leading up to an election intended to protect eligible voters from being denied their right to vote. U.S. District Judge Patricia Tolliver Giles uh, ruling means that an estimated 1,600 people will have their voter registration restored in Virginia, but also the judge did state that voters will be notified that they are ineligible to vote if they are not U.S. citizens. What does this mean? Even though Virginia is not considered a battleground state, across Alabama, other states, the fact that these votes are back on the books, the fact that these votes matter. Now, it may not be a battleground state for a presidential race, but again, where one percentage point separates candidates in a congressional district that encompasses five various cities and localities, yes, one vote does matter. So again, I end the show the way that I started, urging you to go out and vote, 10 days left until we elect a new president, a new U.S. senator, U.S. congresspersons across the board in the entire country, and our local officials running for mayor. Make sure, school board and the like, and city council, make sure you go out and vote. Exercise your right to vote. Make sure that you continue to operate in a way that is responsible, fair, and equitable, and ensuring that our country continues to live up to its motto and his creed to all mankind. Until next time, be good, be great, God bless, and we'll see you next week. Hi, I'm Carrie Washington, and you're listening to State of the Water with award-winning host, Dr. Eric Clavel.